Okay, so it's August the 10th, uh, 2023, about 8.15 Eastern Standard Time. And I want to talk with you briefly today about clients, some clients that you're going to have that aren't going to do what they need to do on their end uh, to keep up their landscaping or their lawn care or whatever. In this particular case, it has to do with lawn care and weed control. I have a client that um, we do um, lawn applications for. He called me a little bit earlier this year and asked for help. I put together a program for him. He was in trouble with the HOA. I mean, I'll get to that in a second, why he was in trouble and why I believe he was in trouble. But anyway, I, I set him up on a program and I told him, I'm going to need two years to really turn your lawn around. We're going to have to seed it really heavily in the fall, specifically the backyard. Um, and that's going to do a lot to help fight weeds naturally. I said, but, um, you know, we got to get the timing of the pre-emergence down right. And then, you know, there are root systems that might not be active that, um, obviously had already germinated that were seeds at one point in time and haven't uh, come up um, uh, this season as possible for weeds, uh, root systems to go dormant. I said, so we just have to be consistent with pre-emergence and post-emergence to keep the grass fed. And then of course, regularly maintain the lawn and make sure it gets watered. We've got to keep the grass healthy, got to keep it growing so it can spread, so it can do its thing and help knock out the weeds. If the grass is not healthy or if it is failing or if it is going dormant because it's not getting water, it's going to leave uh, room and opportunity for weeds to come up. I've explained this several times. And I explained to him, you know, when you mow your backyard, you need to bag it because the weeds are really bad out there. And it has to be mowed at least once a week uh, because um, the weeds will come up even in cases where the grass might not. And if you're letting it go for too long, uh, it's going to seed out and you're going to keep having the same issue. Um, to an extent, even considering you've got um, uh, a pre-emergence down into the soil, because that was one of the first applications we did, even though it was a late start in the year. He hasn't been cutting the grass like he's supposed to or anything like that. And uh, he had a bunch of limestone in his driveway, about five yards of limestone in his driveway, and had been there for about a year. And the HOA had kept you know, telling him, look, your weeds are out of control, your lawn's out of control, and it's in a really nice neighborhood. And you've got all this stone, you need to move it. Um, or, you know, you, we're going to have our attorney get involved. So he had it there for almost a year. Uh, finally, finally got it moved within, uh, well, about a week ago. Uh, and um, I'm in his backyard putting his lawn application down. And I noticed he's got a five or a four season room in the back of the house that's lined with glass. And he has taken all this limestone and shoveled it and put it into that back room. And so he comes out to talk with me when I'm putting his lawn application down. He says, yeah, I put that back there for the dogs. I'm like, dude, you don't need to do that for the dogs. And then he's like, yeah, I've got the HOA on my back because of the weeds in the yard. And he says, they're threatening me. You know, they're threatening me. They might, um, you know, sue me or, or whatever. And he said, my wife and I are considering moving. And if we don't move, then she said, well, maybe we'll put up a pool in the backyard, although we can't afford it. And I'm thinking to myself, a pool is even more maintenance. Um, that's not the right answer to put it in an eighty or a hundred thousand dollar pool in the backyard, um, and especially for weeds. If you look at the cost of a weed program, and I reminded him it just takes time, uh, and and ultimately this is a guy that doesn't need to be in this type of a property. He doesn't have history with grass. He has been trying to do it himself for so long, but he's not maintaining the grass regularly with the mowing. He's not following instruction. He's not watering it as it needs to be. Uh, we cut it for him uh, recently while we were there. And I asked him if he would let us cut it every week. And I gave him an estimate. And he said, well, I can only afford every other week. I'm like, that's fine. We'll help you every other week. But you've got to maintain the odd weeks. Or we're not going to get anywhere. And um, bless his heart, man. He's probably got a good heart. But you're going to come across these clients in your time that don't have it all up here. They've got too much going on. They can't handle it. They're trying to juggle 500 things at one time. Um, they're not following the instructions that you discussed with them before you agreed to do work with them and before they hired you. And then as you do each step of the phase of the different projects that you're going to be doing for them, they're not following up. And so in this particular case, the lawn is getting better, but gradually or rather minimally, and we're not hitting our targets. You know, it's not improving the way that it should be for the amount of time that we've been on it. So recently we put down several additional applications above and beyond what he paid for in order to help him mow the grass. It took almost three and a half hours to mow the grass for a lawn that should take about 30 minutes. Um, it has four huge bags of grass. And, um, you know, I just, I want to quit it. You know, I want to quit the lawn, to be honest with you. I've got 
Two more applications in a seating I have to do, and we're not going to renew him, no matter what happens. Uh, he's a vet, um, and so I was trying to help out in that situation. That's why I did the extra applications the other day, which, by the way, they were free to him. I didn't bill him, but they weren't free to me. It cost me almost $200 in material on fertilizer products for the stuff that I put down on his lawn. Uh, and here we are. His lawn is just an absolute mess, and the guy just won't listen. And it's one of those situations where you go up to have a conversation that can be done literally in five minutes and it takes an hour and 45 minutes. And finally, on the recent visit, I had to stop. I said, hey, man, listen, I got to get going. You know, I've, I'm spraying out here. I need to stay focused, you know, um, water the lawn in this evening, stay off of it for 24 hours. You know, we'll be back in two weeks to kind of see how it's progressing. We should be seeing herbicide damage at that point in time. You're going to have to grow the grass because there's nitrogen in it now. Um, and we got to stay on top of it. I guarantee you when I go back, the grass isn't going to be cut. But, he, but maybe let's just be optimistic. Maybe it is cut. And is he going to be able to stay consistent with that? I honestly don't know. Now, all that being done instead, such being the case, the point that I'm getting at here is you're going to find clients that aren't going to do what they're supposed to do. In the years that I've done this, I've had clients where we've done seeding for, they haven't watered the grass. Or they would sit out with a, a hose and power wash the seed off of the soil and then wonder why grass hasn't come up. Instead of using, you know, some uh, sort of a, um, a sprinkler that shoots, you know, water into the air and allows it to cascade down onto the soil or whatever. Listen, I'm not suggesting that, you know, these people are really stupid by any means. But even in cases like in, in, in every situation that I've done, because I've learned over time, I explain this stuff to clients. And even in cases when you give them follow-up care and even when you give them instructions on paper, they just don't do it. And those are the situations where you're going to have to stop because, and you're going to have to discontinue. The neighbors are going to see your equipment there over time. And they're going to associate the state of his or her lawn or landscaping with your business. They don't know the whole story. Now, they might have an idea and a suspicion on this particular case because he doesn't mow like he's supposed to. Um, I, I don't know why he put all the gravel in that all-seasons room. He says, well, he did it for the dogs. No, you don't do that in a glass-lined room. The dogs don't want to play in a 5 by 10 area or a 10 by 10 area that's got you know four or five yards of stone in it and some of it's hilled. I mean, I don't know what goes through people's mind, um, but... It's it's a, a no-win situation for me. We're going to finish out the season. The second I have the last lawn application, I'm going to send him an update. We're done. We're not going to do it anymore. He might decide to sell the property before then. Who knows? But you got you to look at and understand that, and as you probably already know, there's a certain amount of pride or a sense of accomplishment when you help clients get from A to Z. It makes you feel good. It's not always just about getting a referral. But you want the client to get a return on their investment. But you want to feel good about the work that you do too. And the truth of the matter is, these lawns, these projects that we do, we don't have them in a science lab where we do the work and then it has all the ideal circumstances. We do the work and that's it. It's up to nature and the client to do what they need to do. And, and I, as I've explained several times before, I've explained to this guy, I always explain to my clients, nature does not care if you are tired. Nature doesn't care if you would rather do something else or if you're sick or whatever or you're injured. If you don't go out and do the work, you know, nature is going to happen. Nature is going to do its thing. The grass is going to grow. The weeds are going to seed out. The HOA, which isn't nature, by the way, is going to send you another letter saying, hey, you haven't cut your grass in four weeks. What's going on? Or not even what's going on. Cut it or we're going to send somebody out there, you know, maybe the city or whatever to take care of it. So know when to drop the clients that, that just aren't getting there. Even if they have a paycheck that they want to hand you, you got to look at what you're delivering and the message that it's showing everybody else. I don't like to always worry about what other people think, okay? But when it comes to the condition of a property, that my vehicles are routinely there for service and it's not being maintained appropriately, that's negative for me. Because all these other homes that are potential clients that have outstanding lawns that pay you know, to outsource their outdoor care are seeing our vehicles there and they're thinking that we're a joke. And that's not cool with me, particularly in this particular case where we've got a client that's not holding their end of the bargain. So drop the clients that's called a growing pain. It's not good for you. Let them go. Let them figure it out. 
He's not going to figure it out. Ultimately, I think they'll end up uh, selling the home, which is really good for them anyway. It's just not, you know, their cup of tea to take care of it. And that's not a bad thing. They've got other things in life that they could focus on and that they need to focus on. And as I said before, I'm not saying that the guy's a bad guy or the client's a bad, you know, person, uh, but they're not a good client. They're not ideal. You need to drop them. Drop the clients that are doing you bad uh, before they cause you to possibly lose more business and even get negative reviews. Peace.